I find myself in a BRLT bus, which is otherwise called Ayalulu, and for some time now it's been running within the capital from Amasaman through Fanko, Achimota to Accra Central. And uh, we also hope to see a route from Kaswa all the way to Accra, Adenta to Accra, and Tema to Accra. But have you really taken time to know how effective this is and even how the bus looks like? This is exactly what I am going to take you through right here. So uh, we have this bus, you enter through here, and uh, you can imagine if a person is disabled, how will that person in a wheelchair be able to board this bus? So what you are seeing right here is usually slided, as you can see, to enable the person with disability to be able to enter. For now, I want to limit myself to the person with disability. Then we look at other passengers. So when they enter, this place is supposed to be for them. So they could then sit here and they use this to protect themselves. Then the person accompanying the person living with disability sits here just to ensure that uh, he or she is safe. And uh, you have this other one with un a unique color being yellow. It is actually meant for uh, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and also the aged. So if you are above 60 years and you enter, this preferential treatment is given to you to feel comfortable. So at any point in time, it is reserved for such people. And uh, there are about 40 seats for those who intend to sit. And then, well, if the seats are full or you wish to stand, it takes about 30 of such passengers, the standees. And uh, there are some uniqueness about this that I want to show you briefly. Use, okay, USB charger under your seat. USB charger under your seat. So you won't find this in Trotsky's, our usual Trotsky's, but in this you can charge your phone just as I am charging mine now. This is my phone and uh, it is 17 percent it was off but i've been charging it for some time now you can see me right there as my screen saver and in due time they even intend to introduce internet access into the bus and there is a dedicated lane for them to be able to roll or move on without much traffic and then uh, buses crossing them uh, but indeed on our way here we are the achimota station it appears that you would find some of the commercial vehicles like the Trotro drivers always competing with them on the road, overtaking them and even going to park at their bus stops, which is really affecting their movement. And if you care to know, so there is an Ayalulu card which then enables users to be able to board, pay and then move on. So at any time when you have money on the card, you can board just at any point and then move on. My name is Irene. I, st I stay around Asofa. You stay around Asofa. Asofa isn't that far from here. How has it been for you boarding the Ayalulu bus? Um, to me, it's been uh, convenient. Mm. Yes. Because As compared to the normal commercial vehicles, uh, otherwise called Trotro. Tro. Yes. In yes. what ways? Because um, it's easy um, to access it from where I come from and. It, go, it takes me straight to where I want to go. Mm. Mm. And uh, again, for how long have you been boarding it? Um, not for long, I think. Um, it depends. Normally, when I'm going to campus, then I, I, I board it. But it doesn't go to where I work, so only when I'm going to campus. Oh, okay. Mm. But then, doesn't it slow down? Maybe, you know, the trust keys usually move faster here and there, but this may be moving slowly and all that, and may delay your time. Um, it may move slowly, but um, you know, sometimes when you get to some places, it's only their buses that goes through the routes. So you end up going to where you are going uh, faster. Okay. When we started, the patronage was very poor. In December, we had, were doing an average of 1,400 passengers a day. But as you can see now, it's really picked up. We're currently doing close to 9,000 passengers a day on this corridor. We so still see the buses quite empty. Yes, it, it, it depends on which period you actually are looking at those buses. Mm. We have morning peak and we have evening peaks. Morning peaks and evening peaks are highly patronized. It's in between peaks that you find out that the buses are not as full as we want them to be. Right. Right. We, we, so, we are told mm. that you're supposed to do uh, 25,000 to be able to break even. And at the moment, you are doing close to 10,000. Right. Uh, it means that you are running a lot, aren't you? 
Well, we are still have a long way to go to be able to break even, yes. We are ramping up the passenger numbers, and that is the real challenge. Others think that is because of a system of uh, people are having to acquire a card. So why not uh, think of changing that method? You see, the most important thing about running this kind of operations is sustainability. And we want to reduce revenue leakage as much as possible. The card system is a much better system in terms of controlling your revenue leakages. And that's why we're using the card system. We think with time and with education, we'll get more people to come around to understanding how to use the car system. You and that's what we're, mm, we're planning to do. But your education, you don't see it on TV. People, my mom doesn't know that she has to account certain cars. So when she goes to the terminal... It's a, it's a deliberate strategy we are adopting. We want actually to meet one-on-one -on -one with the passenger on the corridor. So our focus is dedicated to the passengers and the lorry parks on the corridor. As you can attest, since Monday, we have a team of customer service persons moving around the corridor, explaining how to use the system and making available the cars for the system to the patrons on the corridor. That's a limited target. There are thousands of people see, who could be reached the via yes, the mainstream the, media. Yes, most of the passengers on the corridor or with set, living in settlements on the corridor are the ones who use the service. If I use, for example, the TV stations, for example, and it has national coverage, really, those who hear about it, how many of them will actually be using the services on the corridor? That is why our activities are initially targeted at the people on the corridor. The relation between you and then the Toto drivers, and then we are told you've been having some challenges with them. How bad is this? You see, our system is organized in such a manner that the companies, the bus companies running services on the corridor are the Trotro unions. So we have a GPR2 company, we have a Pro Tour company, and we have a cooperative company that has been created. And they are the ones who have been trained and their capacity built to be able to run services on the corridor. So it's the same total people we are working with on the corridor. Yes, we have challenges, especially at our stops and our dedicated facilities. But with a lot of education and sensitization, we are overcoming those challenges. I mean, my bus lanes are being violated with impunity, etc. But we've changed how we are carrying out our enforcement and it's beginning to have a bite. So currently we are addressing that challenge. Oh. We have actually employed the services of 24 hour towing, the 24 hour towing company, and we are working closely together with them. So if you violate the corridor, your vehicle will, act, will be towed to a pound, where you have to pay a fine before your vehicle is released to you, and it's working. Have you arrested people so far? Yes, we have. How many? I've been told currently that we're doing, the towing on the average about 20 vehicles a, a day off the corridor. The operational arrangements are supposed to be taken care of itself through the fare box. So its sustainability depends on how well we manage the system so that we can be able to cover our cost of operations from the fare box. When are you moving to Adenta? We are looking at moving to Adenta during the last quarter of this year. Okay. We are putting the infrastructure ready for Adenta. And so when do you think that you, you will be able to break even? When do you think that everything will fall in place? Oh, we are looking at within the next six months we should be capable of breaking even. Looking at the rate of growth of the patronage, we expect that within the next six months, we should be able to be self-sustaining. Okay. So this is it. You may want to try it out some other time.